Hello, I am Himadri Kaushik and I was fortunate enough to get the 97th rank uh, this year in the civil services examination. I would like to talk about uh, preparing for the interview and uh, I think I could give some um, perhaps valuable pieces of advice because uh, I got 90, 195 uh, in 2017 uh, in Vinay Mittal board and this year I got 193 in uh, PK Joshi Sir's board. So twice that I've given the interview I've uh, scored decently. So now like I would like to just firstly start with a few things. Uh, how do you need to start preparing for the interview? A lot of people will tell you it's luck, it's chance and uh, it's random. I don't think so. I had different boards and I have friends who did well every time. So you have to go with an open mind. You have to give the interview a chance. Like you cannot start by thinking that it's unfair. Unless you try, you will never do well at it, right? And uh, secondly, okay, so I am from a background in which I did my education in English. A lot of people give it with Hindi and as their medium or they give it in English when their first language is not English. And the trend is such that such people are not, it's not held against them. Like if your language is not that good or maybe at that point of time you're not able to express yourself, you still do well. I know like I read, uh, saw the interview of a person who stammers and was not very expressive and he got 206. So you cannot let that hold you back. I feel like people who cannot uh, express themselves well, they assume they'll do badly. They think that because of the way they talk, they won't do well. And if you think that while going into an interview, you will not do well. The interview is not about your knowledge. And I cannot stress this enough. They are not there to ask you facts. They, if they ask you facts, they're not going to judge you on it. And trust me, take my word for it. Like everybody who talks about the interview says this, that they are not t testing your knowledge. But somehow people's preparation always centers around studying. You cannot study for the interview. It is just not possible. Like they are not going to ask you the growth rate. And if they ask you the growth rate and you do not know it to the exact second decimal point or the, even the first decimal point, if you just say like it was around 7% or it was above 6.5% this year, they're not going to hold it against you because that's not what they're testing. They're testing your capacity to take stress to some extent. They're testing how you come across to them. Like it is a, a lot about first impressions, I understand. In that sense, it might be unfair. Like people might not be that good at first impressions, but you can train yourself to be good. So like first let's go on what they're testing, what I feel they're testing. I think what they're testing is your analytical skills, your ability to take a question in, understand exactly what they're asking and give them something a little analytical. Your ability to toss a few things, not answer them head on because they're going to throw you a few easy ones and then they'll throw you a few difficult ones. It depends on how you tackle all of them. They're testing your presence of mind. And like from my understanding, I've been uh, training for the IRS in NADD for a bit. Your ability to respond to urgent situations is something that's very important in the services. Like if they're testing how you react suddenly or if they provoke you, what do you do? Do you get provoked? Like it's a very important thing to, uh, to be testing in a person. So I feel like it's okay. And uh, the things that they're testing are fair enough. They are your understanding, your uh, sometimes even offbeat thinking. And now going into how to prepare for it. Now this is unconventional advice but uh, what had happened I had a very sedentary lifestyle while studying for the exam. I'm sure everybody does. Uh, from three months before the prelims to like mains which was uh, seven eight month time I stopped working out. I would not exercise. I would just sit in my room order food. I mean if you're hungry at two o'clock at night you're not going to eat an apple. You're going to eat a pack of chips. So I just became very unhealthy. Then for the interview, I decided I'm going to start running every day and go to the gym. So I started running and I started going to the gym. I lost a lot of weight and uh, it was not to look good, but to feel good. Because honestly, I feel like if you uh, walk into a place and you feel you're overweight, you're unhealthy or is your shirt not tucked in fine or like would they think I'm fat, am I fat or things like that. They take away a lot of your self-confidence and a lot of interview is about walking in with confidence. And I can assure you, you go running every day in the morning, maybe not lose any weight and it will help build your confidence. And physical uh, exercise also gives mental peace. It does. I've experienced it myself, like the moment I start running, my stress levels start going down. So I think some form of exercise, specifically in the interview phase, is advisable. Secondly, how to study for it. 
of course you need to cover your daf something that's written in your daf and you do not know would be like a faux pas like it would be a major mistake you cannot do that uh, for instance if i've written my hobby reading and they ask me five books and then i give them those books and they ask me the writers other books authored by the same people i should know everything in and out and uh, i see a lot of people saying that you know if you've written tennis then you should write if you've written playing tennis they should not ask you about tennis the thing is that they will and they expect you to know because somehow they assume that if you've written tennis you're a tennis fanatic so try to read about it as much as you can because if it's something that you can prepare like to just know that i'll get a question from in and around tennis is good enough so it's good to know like you can what you can prepare is that and if they ask you something really random like the weight of the tennis ball or something like that there's no point in uh, trying to mug up those facts so it's okay so prepare the daf very well prepare your college your school uh, the city that you were born in if it's different try to prepare that give it a lot of time i think like uh, you have ample time after the mains instead of wasting it away one should just study so one can get done with the daf now moving on to current affairs it is absolutely imperative that you read the newspaper I started reading uh, two newspapers along with the economist uh, um, every week because the economist covers economics issues I have economics optional I also used to forward a lot of articles to my friends with PSIR optional because uh, it has a lot of international relations and a very like an above view overall view of the thing like you can it helps you understand Brexit was going on uh, when we were preparing for interview and the economist articles on Brexit really helped me understand the issue in a different way because uh, in Indian newspapers they would not give a very global view it would be like a india's perspective of brexit or how india would be affected so the economist was a nice magazine to read you can read any other magazine one i think like one should read the newspaper with an open mind if they've given a view that you do not agree with it's okay but it's important to know that it's good to know uh, the opposite view because when they counter you about with questions about the opposite view it can be very nice it can be very nice if you know the answer to their counter right they ask you something and you know how you want to retaliate to that so reading any newspaper is fine i don't think you should find a newspaper that matches your uh, ideological uh, disposition i don't think that's important i don't think it's okay to have an ideology in that sense like everything should be tackled on an issue base issue basis right there in the interview hall and I, even if you have an ideology even if you have an opinion they're not going to hold it against you I don't think you should have ideology you can have opinion of course and sometimes they tell you to take a stand no you tell me yes or no you tell me yes or no if they're being adamant about that then you say yes or no and um, a few things i would want to like say that there are like these soft skills about the interview uh, that were given to me by a lot of people uh, specifically khan sir um of ksg helped like he was just give gives these youtube uh, lectures or like i went to him so he told me a couple of things first thing when we talk we talk in an informal manner like you will never say the kids should do this no you the children should do this you right there's a it's a child it's not a kid uh, things like these formal nuances to get better control of it and don't be informal it's the big it's pretty much the biggest interview of our lives i mean maybe other people give mba interviews but for me it was the biggest interview of my life it is such a sacred a precious thing how can i take it casually if i'm not taking it casually my language cannot reflect that i'm taking it casually it's not about english or hindi one should give it in hindi if that's what you're comfortable with par fir aap hindi mein ye nahi keh sakte na aisa kar raha tha kar rahe the matlab acche se language to acha hona chahiye if in your head it's important you should show them that it means something to me so don't be casual in your language don't use slangs that's like a complete no no and secondly coming to a few things uh, which show your state of mind or to not offend the other person if you're saying something Uh, in a third person say it in a third person don't say you like uh, you shouldn't do that uh, just say one shouldn't do that i mean i know you one is not you're not saying that you shouldn't do that one ab kehna chahiye ki one shouldn't do that but use the word one instead of that never get attacking or personal secondly don't be stubborn i understand you might have a view that the other person does not have maybe like you're trying to defend something maybe like they've asked you something about triple talaq and you and you supporting um, the government stance and like that a person is countering you again and again and you're countering again and again beyond a point don't fight with them you have your opinions that's okay and sometimes uh, it takes a lot of intelligence and a lot of emotional intelligence to not fight 
so at that point of time i think it's better you show some self restraint and if they're saying something again and again just accept it and if they're correcting you but you know they're wrong there should be a softer answer than no i'm right like you cannot say i'm right you can tell them that so that's what i've read i'm sure i will be sure to go and look it up like okay this will not work all the time but i think that's a better way to uh, tackle that situation and uh, so i like a lot of times you need to find a humor in the situation so vinay mittal sir was uh, it was an excellent interview like he's very fair and everything but uh, there was a point so my my hobby is playing football and i've played in college and i absolutely love playing football so sir asked me about football and he asked me like uh, why do you play football it's such a rough game it's a men's game and uh, where did you learn, how did you learn to play it why do you play it you know he got a little i thought he was trying to provoke me and i didn't know what to say if i go all feminist on it it would be aggressive so i just laughed and i just laughed and said sir i just really like the game i just laughed because i didn't i just showed like i don't even know how to answer that question so it diffused the situation he laughed the female member next to him laughed so it, it, you know you don't have to like take everything personally sometimes just find a smile is all right like don't seem like a retard but uh, a smile is all right and a uh, few things so my uh, nana uh, used to always question me things about things okay like your favorite writer your favorite footballer whatever and whenever i'd give him an answer he would tell me ki what about an indian one why don't you give me an indian example so i think like that generation thinks like that if they want to ask you your favorite economist and you say like john keynes then they would like it but they would much more appreciate it if you said like sen or bhagwati or someone indian because they find you that you know they want you to relate to something indian so i think that's good and uh, a few other things like i'm sure everybody has their ideas but like who do you look up to the most or who's a good leader now it's very good if you can find a female leader or uh, you know inst- like everybody is going to say apj now like if you ask to ra- write an answer about a leader or somebody who inspires you everybody is going to say apj you find a female right ila bhat or whoever like just find a person who you can stand who can stand out for you personally like in my interview i had written football i'm a girl who plays football so i looked up the indian national team their captain and everything about the team so be prepared on those fronts because they're your hobbies but then also they're going to analyze you from a different perspective so it shows your sensitivity it shows your understanding for a certain group which is considered vulnerable so certain things you know you can prepare the answers and it's like a very easy ball and if you just play it well you can just like it can be count for a lot um, and the interview i know like the, just saying don't be nervous doesn't work so you have to work constantly on being not being nervous i did that by giving a lot of mock interviews in my first interview i gave around 8 uh, mocks this year round i couldn't get leave from my academy so i just gave around 3 mocks a mock interview is good because the first time you're facing a formal panel cannot be on the date of the interview so it's good to give a mock but do not listen to them i was criticized heavily by a lot of people i was told that i i can just talk well and i don't have knowledge i did not listen to them i did not let it affect my confidence and i went in and uh, lastly i'd say this interview is very important i got into the, uh, into the irs because of interview that year my written score was not good at all this year also what has pushed my rank up is the interview and the thing is that um, it can just give you a long jump right like if I, i'm one i got 193 if i'd got in 170 i would obviously like 20 marks is a lot and there's not that much difference between getting those two marks you have to be good on that day so start building yourself as like an individual from the day your mains end if you have a hobby that you have never done in your life learn yoga 3 months is enough to learn yoga if you written yoga then go learn yoga so it's always good to have practice just like work on it work hard for it don't study because that's not what they're testing and um, i hope whoever is giving the interview does exceptionally well thank you